Welcome to the Selling from the Heart podcast on the SalesCast Network. You've joined a global movement of sales professionals who are dedicated to being authentic and building trust. We call it Selling from the Heart. Together, we are on a mission to bring sincerity and substance to the sales profession we all love. Get ready to be inspired and equipped as we join our hosts, Larry Levine and Daryl Amy. Hello and welcome back to the Selling from the Heart podcast. Your co-host, Daryl Amy, here today with Larry Levine. What's going on, Larry? Uh, Hey, we got all kinds of things. 2023, what a year it's been. We're knocking on 2024. And you know what's really good? Seeing you outside the Selling from the Heart studio. Terrific, Daryl. Glad you're here. We've gone mobile. We're on the road. And we've got an incredible conversation on tap with you today with none other than Chris Shimbra. Get ready. This is like the flagship episode as we launch into what is going to be the best year yet for the Selling from the Heart community. We're so excited. In 2024, it's time to set those New Year's resolutions. Now, you could say all kinds of things (laughs) about New Year's resolutions, but I like a New Year's resolution that I can keep. And one of those New Year's resolutions that not only you can keep, but is going to help make this the best year ever is being a part of the Selling from the Heart Insiders Group. Larry, I love the Selling from the Heart Insiders Group. No, so do I. And it's every, I look forward to Fridays. I absolutely look forward to Fridays when we can hang out with like-minded, like-hearted sales leaders, salespeople. And together we bring in guests, we call them up close and personals, and then we mastermind around this. This is where true inspiration occurs. And we encourage you, come hang out with us at Selling from the Heart Insiders Group. What a New Year's resolution you can keep and you can get a free pass to kick the tires and test it out. Just go to sellingfromtheheart.net slash free dash pass. And Larry, right now we're headed into a new year. This is going to be a phenomenal year, 2024. We've got this little break at the end of the year to plan and vision. And and Larry, I just want to say, as we get ready to invite Chris into the studio, that our vision for 2024 and the conversations that are happening inside the Selling from the Heart community, I know, I just got to say, I'm excited. I'm really, really excited about what's ahead. You know, so am I. And, and there's one word, and, and I'm teeing you up on this, and I'm throwing you a softball. I'm super grateful for everything that's happened <laughs> this year in the Selling from the Heart community. Great things ahead. But hey, Daryl, that was a softball for you, by the way. It is because today on our podcast, we're excited to feature (laughs) Chris Shimbra. He's the best selling author of Gratitude and Pasta, the secret sauce for human connection. Forbes ranks his book as number two, uh, the number two book of 2020 to create human connection. USA Today calls him the gratitude guru. He's a founding member of the Rolling Stone Magazine's Culture Council, and he sits on the executive board at Fast Company. He's also the founder of the 747 Gratitude Experience, a framework used to strengthen client and team relationships in profound ways whose clients we could probably spend the next half hour reading Microsoft, Google, Dell, SAP, and hundreds more. He's used the principles of gratitude to spark over 500,000 relationships around the dinner table serving Fortune 50 CEOs, Olympians, and Academy Award winners. Uh, It's Super Bowl champions. You name it. Chris has been there. (laughs) And he's here in the Selling from the Heart studios. Chris, welcome to the Selling from the Heart show. It's great to have you here. Hello to the two of you and a big gratitude to uh, to Scott McGregor for getting us uh, getting us all connected back in the day. It's a pleasure to be here with you all. We've got so many things in common and, and so much heart alignment. No, same here in tip of the cap. And I'm glad you brought up Scott. That guy <laughs> is one relationship builder and connector. Scott, love you, man. Yeah, no doubt. Great, grateful Scott brought us all together. And one of the reasons is I'm looking forward to hearing your answer to the question, Chris, that every guest on the Selling from the Heart podcast answers. And that is, what does it mean to you to sell from the heart? Oh, gosh, that's a big question. (laughs) Um, What does it mean to me to sell from the heart? Um, You know, eight years ago, I was uh, blessed to have accidentally stumbled uh, into a profession that now I dedicate my life to helping companies connect in the most meaningful ways in the corporate wellness space, all that kind of stuff. It's a vocation, a profession 
that uh, saved my life once upon a time, continues to save my life every day. And I get to sell that, that transformation every day. And so selling from the heart is something that I must do just to survive. Um, the work that I get to do day in and day out is so is such a burning desire, I have such a burning desire in my heart to bring it to others that I have no choice but to sell for my soul, to sell through authenticity, to sell through my own lived experience, to sell through service, to sell through empathy. And when I do that, I can make meaningful connections with others and I can drive the needle on sales engagement, moving customers from just merely satisfied to fully engaged and authentically connected. And uh, yeah. I, um, I've been doing that for about eight years. It's been great. Hey, Chris, you got, you know what? You're speaking my language. I'm sitting here listening. I'm like, just keep going. I'm going to run through a brick wall right now. Cause you got me <laughs> fired up, but there, there's a, there's a couple things that, that you had said in, in uh, I just hope you can expand upon it. You used the word transformational and then you used meaningful connections and you used hmm. authenticity. And, and these are words that I believe are the keys to relationships. And just from your point of view is, can you just unpack what it means to be transformational, how you bring authenticity to the forefront that can help you establish meaningful connections? And I know I'm throwing you on the spot, Chris, you can handle it. I know you can. I got this. Look, it, you know, the question for everybody who's listening is, what is the change we want to see in the world? through the products or services that we sell, through the way that we conduct our business? What is the transformation or growth or innovation or change we want to see? The transformation that I want to see in our world is to help people become a little bit less lonely and a little bit more humanly connected. How do we do business with our heart and connect in meaningful ways rather than just do business through spreadsheets in a transactional way? which is so much of the mission of what selling from the heart is all about. And so if I'm going to seek a transformation in a positive way in service of others, I have no choice but to show up as authentically myself as humanly possible. Only when I clear my side of the street through the burnout and the stress and then the anxiety and the overwhelm and the things that used to bring me regret or guilt or shame, only when I process those things and show up into conversation with others, whether in a sales context or not, as authentically as I am, can I then invite them hmm. to want to step in as they authentically are. And for some people in this world, they haven't been authentically themselves in decades. Hmm. We've been running around lying to ourselves doing what we thought our parents would want us to do, doing whatever society says that we should do. And it's not necessarily our most authentic self. And so if I can help someone be authentically them and create a meaningful moment of conversation or connection with them, then whatever we're going to sell or whatever type of business we're going to do, it's just an afterthought. Because we've actually connected on human to human things. So that that is, you know, first and foremost how I approach any type of interaction in my life. Mm. Oh, so You're good. Definitely speaking our language. And authenticity, I think, is so critical to to human connection. This is what we talk about at Selling from the Heart all the time. This is a movement of authenticity in the sales profession because mm -hmm. it's such a game changer. And I know for you and your work, a lot of this begins with gratitude. And I first encountered you, Chris, through uh, Scott McGregor. Then I picked up Gratitude and Pasta, which is an amazing book. And of course, congratulations as well on your new Wall Street Journal bestseller, Gratitude Through Hard Times. Where does gratitude play a role in all of this when it comes to making authentic human connections? Mm, fantastic question. Um, it helps you, short answer, it helps you shift from me to us. And what I mean by that, and this is going to trigger some of you on this call. If you're listening to this, you might not be at the point in your life to to, to understand, acknowledge, and agree with what I'm about to say. Most of us walk around the world entitled, selfish, only thinking about ourselves. What's in it for me? How do I do something better for my personal gain? 
Chris, that would never happen in the sales profession. Just, just to be clear. I mean, come on. All right. Come on. Keep it going, Chris. We, we, either, we either walk around as, let's just say as salespeople, we either walk around thinking that our product or service is so much better than anybody else's product or service out there. Uh, we are the superior one. That is a form of entitlement. Or mm. we walk around the world thinking that we've got it so much harder than someone else out there, that we are a greater victim or have been through greater trauma than all of you out there. And therefore, I deserve special treatment. Me, me, me. That is entitlement as well. That's how most of the human race walks around the earth. Gratitude is the acknowledgement that you've received something of benefit, something of value from others. You didn't get here alone. It required the intervention of others for your positive gain. So gratitude is the acknowledgement of that. It helps you think less about yourself and it helps you think more about others. What are they going through? What benefits have they given you? What did they have to go through in their life to provide the benefit that you've now received? It allows you to step into their shoes, to understand their feelings and perspectives, to understand what they're going through in life. That posture of otherness, as we call, is healing. Because the less time that we spend dwelling on us mm. and the more time we spend trying to serve others, A, the better off our health will be, but B, the better off our, our sales will be. Um, and, and so gratitude is that micro, that positive psychology micro intervention that makes that shift from I to we. Oh, this is, this is absolutely fantastic stuff, Chris. And, and I, there's a word I want to layer into this gratitude for a moment, because I'd really love to have your opinion on it. But in the very beginning, you talked about authentically connecting. And I believe, and this is just my own personal beliefs, it's coming from my heart, people can tell when you're being authentic to who you are. It's it's something that just, I believe, just oozes from you. However, people can also sense when you're being inauthentic. It, it's just part of human nature. So going back to gratitude, what I want us to think about, and I'd be curious your thoughts, is where does intentionality play in this? Because mm. there can be inauthentic gratitude. And there can be intentional gratitude. You get where I'm going with this, Chris? Totally. Totally. Great. Oh, gosh. Where do I unpack that? Because there's so much to unpack there. <laughs> um, so you, you, mentioned the, um, you mentioned the difference between authentic and inauthentic. I want to educate you on the difference between gratitude and ingratitude. Love it. So... In in the in in the year sixty two A.D., there was an elder Roman statesman named Lucius Annius Seneca, who modern day people would call a, an ancient Roman Stoic, known as Seneca the Younger. And one of the books he wrote um, was called On Benefits, and the fifth through seventh line of that book state that the greatest plague to Roman society is that we neither know how to give nor receive a benefit. Of all the vices common in today's society, nothing is more common than ingratitude. All the sacrilegious traitors, adulterers, ravishers, uh, thievery, tyrants, nothing is worse than the ungrateful man especially given that all those things stem from ingratitude. He looked at that society, a society at its greatest power, fighting foreign wars, having class divide, having social warfare, uh, having the Antonine Plague, top power in the world, plagued by ingratitude. Hmm. And I look at that society, Roman society, and say there's a lot of things that they were going on then that were going on in our country today. Class warfare, social divide, fighting foreign wars, a national debt crisis, fake news, Antonine plague, COVID-19, that kind of thing. So if ingratitude might have caused the demise of the Roman Empire, why don't we do opposites? 
Why don't we build cultures of gratitude? All right. So I tell you that history to say gratitude, ingratitude, authentic, inauthentic is nothing new. You can build great powers. You can sell big things. You can run big movements. Yet you could reek of ingratitude. So here's the thing to answer your question. You can go out and say thank you a billion times. But if that thank you is driven out of fear, anxiety, or greed in order to give gratitude so that you can ask for a favor in return, that's not gratitude. That's ingratitude. Um, if you are walking around... Uh, I might have gone on a tangent. Does that make sense so far? Uh, keep it going. Keep okay. it going, cool. dude. Um, yeah. the, the, <laughs> the, the idea that you can go through the obligatory things that you need to do to give thanks, mm. but if that action of giving thanks is some kind of reciprocal behavior or obligation or repayment of debt, and it doesn't come from an authentic place within your heart, then it's just noise hmm. and it can actually do more harm than good. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of people in the world that will go out and give great benefits to others just so they can ask for a benefit in return. And that's not what drives success. Adam Grant proved in his book, Give and Take, that the most successful people on the planet are givers. They give and they give and they give and that generosity of spirit is contagious and it provides tremendous benefits in the long run to them. That is gratitude. Gratitude doesn't have to be returned. In fact, Lucius Annius Seneca in that same book in 62 AD wrote that the bookkeeping of benefits is simple. It's all an expenditure. If you don't get anything in return, that is not a loss. If someone returns it, that is clear gain but no worries if not, because we gave for the sake of giving. The gratitude is the gift in itself. Mm. So when you align your giving and you align with your, your gratitude from an authentic place, it smells good. It tastes good. It's received well. It's contagious. It's a positive upward spiral. Everybody wins. I love it. Uh, hey, Chris, love you're, it. You're, you're so me, hey, Chris, you're taking me to church right now. It's all good, man. <laughs> I love this it. is such a such an incredibly powerful and relevant conversation. I love we're having it right now here as we get ready to move into a new year. And we're going to take a quick break to hear from our sponsor and uh, one of our friends about what it means to them to sell from the heart. We're actually going to hear today from Patty Danucci, former podcast alumni, on what it means to her to sell from the heart. And then we'll rejoin this incredible conversation with Chris Shimbra, and I want to dive into this topic of gratitude in hard times. We'll rejoin Chris here in just a moment. Are you ready to take your career to the next level? One of the best ways we found to do that is to surround yourself with like-hearted sales professionals. And we've heard that saying, you're the sum of the people that you hang out with. Well, if you want to hang out with some sales professionals that also want to take their career to the next level and believe in selling from the heart, we invite you to join us in the Selling from the Heart Insiders Group. This is a weekly gathering of like-hearted, like-minded sales professionals and sales leaders. We truly build community each and every week. One of our favorite things is they're up close and personal with thought leaders, former podcast guests, and people that challenge us to grow in sales. We would like you to join us for our next up close and personal. Just go to sellingfromtheheart.net slash free dash pass. That's selling from the heart net slash free dash pass. And we look forward to seeing you in the Selling from the Heart Insiders group. It's about selling one conversation at a time and being your true self, really coming from a place of, of authenticity, even a little vulnerability and realizing that it's just a conversation. It's a conversation. How can I help you? How can I help you? And then shutting up and listening. So they can tell you <laughs> what they need. I, I have a really good friend who's a, a real estate um, agent. And she just said her whole thing is asking questions and then listening. And that makes her a superstar in her field. 
I love it, Patty. You're a rock star. <laughs> and if you want to be featured on an upcoming episode of the Selling from the Heart podcast, answering the question, what does it mean to you to sell from the heart? Just text the word video to 21,000. That's video to 21,000. And you'll get easy directions. You can put that camera in front of your face, smile and uh, get exposure to the whole Selling from the Heart community. We're here today with Chris Shimbra having this incredible discussion about gratitude. And Chris, Congratulations on your latest book, Wall Street Journal, Best Seller, Gratitude Through Hard Times. One thing I know about the profession of sales is there's going to be some hard times in sales. And so think uh, about our sales uh, sales professionals and sales leaders here. When, you know, in, in this coming year, you know, we want to think a lot of good things are going to happen and they will, but there's going to be some challenging moments, maybe some challenging months Where does gratitude play a role during hard times? And what advice would you give us as we start this new year? Uh, I want to piggyback on what Patty just said. (laughs) 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 To kick off this new year, the greatest gift of gratitude you can give as a sales leader is to shut up and listen. Hear, hear. So I'll back up a step and unpack that. Gratitude can be given in a multitude of ways. Gratitude, as we mentioned in the first part of the episode, is the acknowledgement that you've received something of value, some kind of benefit from others, and you sit with it and you have a desire to either pay it forward or give it back. But I must caution all you inspired listeners out there that not all gratitude given is gratitude heard. See, sometimes we go out with the old phrase, do unto others the way you would like to be done upon, that golden rule. Well, that doesn't work in gratitude. I do not recommend going out and giving gratitude to others in the way that you like to give gratitude yourself. Giving gratitude in the language that's most convenient for you to give it can sometimes come across as selfish, convenient, inauthentic, and lazy. Now, what do we mean by languages? A guy by the name of Gary Chapman wrote a book called The Five Love Languages. And in that book, he found that people, they like to receive love and appreciation in one of five ways. Quality time, physical touch, acts of service, gifts, words of affirmation. So giving gratitude in those languages the way you like to give it, uh -uh. we challenge you, if you're going to go out and give it, to give gratitude to people in the language they like to receive it. Find out, do they like quality time? Do they want physical touch? Do they want words of affirmation? A customer that you're selling to, do they want an Amazon gift card that you buy from across the internet? Or do they want you to drive across town, volunteer at their favorite local nonprofit with them, and spend quality time across the day? We call that the platinum rule giving gratitude in the language the recipient, the customer, the client likes to receive it. So how does that go back to what Patty was just talking about on this podcast? Patty said that one of the ways of selling from the heart is to just shut up and listen. One of the ways of giving authentic gratitude to people who like receiving acts of service or quality time is just to shut up and listen. Be there with their questions, be there with your words, be there with the safe space, be there to just help them feel seen and heard in a sense of belonging, like they're not in this alone. And that is the greatest gratitude you can give that person. And if you do that, I can guarantee an increase in sales results. Harvard Business Review did this wonderful study called The New Science of Customer Emotions. And the Harvard, the uh, the, the Harvard Business Review found that when you tap into the the fundamental motivators, the emotional needs of the customers that you're serving, you will increase their propensity to buy more, promote more, and demonstrate greater loyalty. And when you when you look at those science of customer emotions, some of them are your customers just want to be listened to. They want to be validated. They want to feel a thrill. They want to feel a sense of belonging. And if you just shut up and listen and ask them good questions, boy, you're gonna you're gonna accomplish that. Uh, it and, and, and drive tremendous results. So oh, thank you, Patty. Boy. This is just Chris. This is God, 
By the way, I can hear you talk all day long, Christian. Yeah. It's good stuff. So mm-hmm. we've talked about authentic gratitude. We've talked about intentional gratitude. I'm going to throw another one at your way because it ties into what you were just saying about Gary Chapman's book, The Five Love Languages, is how can we be spontaneous? And this might this might throw some listeners off, but just please follow along with me on this one, is how do we bring spontaneous gratitude to the forefront to help us authentically connect with somebody. I'll tell you what I did four days ago last week. Um, For everybody who's listening on the call, I've been actually suffering through post-concussive symptoms since uh, uh, getting whacked by an electric bike, a high-speed electric bike in New York City uh, just about two months ago a couple months ago on uh, September 11th of 2023, I was Mm. going over the Williamsburg bridge into Manhattan to pay tribute to my cousin, Anthony Infante, who was a Port Authority police member in nine 11. And I got whacked and I haven't been the same since. And I remember I was, I was walking around uh, Brooklyn, New York the other day. And I was feeling pretty down about myself. I mean, post-concussive symptoms, I mean, you're listening to me right now. I'm walking, I'm talking, I'm living. I can stand on one leg. I'm 90% here. But that extra 10%, boy, that's my zone of genius. And in that day in Brooklyn a couple weeks ago, I was walking around dwelling on the 10% and what was going wrong rather than appreciating the overwhelming 90% that I still had and all the freaking blessings that I've got. And I had a woe is me attitude. Boy, was I down and out. And I turned to my phone spontaneously, right? I turned to my phone and I said, let me go to my new text message thread and type in the letter A. And when I typed in the letter A, about 200 people popped up. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, I scrolled down, Alex. Hey, Alex, I just wanted to send you a text message. I'm so grateful for the conversations we used to have in the car during long rides in Florida. I learned so much from you. Hope you're doing well. Next person. Hey, Ahad, I'm so grateful for the time we spent in Paris at Chez Janou. I'm so grateful for you. Hey, uh, boom, 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 boom. It was spontaneous. It was in the moment. I got through 47 people in one hour. And I got the most amazing responses back as I'm continuing to type (laughs) and send outbound spontaneous moments of gratitude. And I knew that I would probably get a lot of great messages from these people. Except I also texted a person that I knew I wouldn't get a response from. My buddy Andrew, who passed away last year. Andrew was one of the first true believers in our message at 747, eight years ago when we were just a bowl of pasta sauce (laughs) in a 350 square foot studio apartment on the Upper West Side of Manhattan. It was Andrew who came to us when we were just calling ourselves dinner with friends. And he said, no, 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 you got to brand this thing. Call it 747. Run with it. He gave our company its name and he's been a, a, a friend ever since. And he passed away last year and I got to his name on my list of a names mm. and I texted him, said, Hey, Andrew, you're probably not, or you're not going to get this message, but I just want to let you know how grateful for, for you I am and the positive message we've been able to have in your honor. And immediately within, you know, Split second, I got the not delivered notification. So I'm sitting there saying, cosmically, universally, he got this message. But then I took a great sigh of relief and I realized I gave him gratitude. See, gratitude is not about giving an authentic expression and expecting anything in return. Gratitude is not about giving an authentic expression expression and needing for it to reach the person at all. Giving the gratitude for the sake of giving it is the gift, even if no one receives it. 
and the positive energy I felt and the positive energy I put into the world, sending a text to someone that I know would never text me back, still a positive benefit in my life. And it Mm -hmm. changed Mm -hmm. my whole life around. And I started to look at my concussion, not as something bad that happened to me, but as something that's taught me great things. It gave me the story to tell on on, on this podcast. It's given me things to learn in perspective that when I feel bad on a sales call, ask better questions. When I feel bad going into a sales call, bring my girlfriend in with me to sit next to me on the call, reveal some vulnerability, and we might be able to close more deals together. And so I've learned a tremendous amount about gratitude through my own hard times. And um, it came through a spontaneous exercise of gratitude that any of us on this call, I mean, literally, if you're listening to this call, open up your phone, type in the letter A, text whoever you want, people you haven't talked to in years, people that have long passed on, people you talk to every day. I texted someone that I talk to almost every day and I said, hey, pal, I've never really thanked you. I've never really told you how grateful I really am for you. Boom. This person wrote back and said, man, that just changed my whole life. Mm. So it's a powerful thing, especially when it's Mm. done spontaneously from the heart. When you feel grateful, when you feel like you're down and out, but you've received positive benefits from others, love on people in the most spontaneous way possible. Oh, Chris, Ah, man, you get, do you give me goosebumps? This is good stuff, Such man. Such a great oh, wow. conversation. Wow. Chris, so, so grateful uh, that you've shared time with us today. And, and I know our audience is sitting there going, how do I get more Chris Shembra in my life? So <laughs> I know, first of all, you're going to want to go right now to your favorite bookstore and grab Gratitude and Pasta, along with Gratitude Through Hard Times. Both incredible books. Uh, Chris, that's a major gift to the world. How else can folks get more of you in uh, in their world? I mean, I, I just go to uh, Chris ChrisShembra.com, uh, my personal website. Um, you can follow us on LinkedIn. We've got a big LinkedIn audience and we're constantly posting content and all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm super proud of actually our column at Rolling Stone magazine. Um, it's somehow a staff favorite. It's the only column Ooh. in Rolling Stone history to exclusively focus in on gratitude, the science and psychology, psychology of gratitude. Um, it's where our most up-to-date thoughts, uh, thought leadership lies. Um, yeah, I don't know. Just, just reach out. Awesome, yeah. man. Well, we're grateful for oh, you. This has been an stuff. incredible conversation. Thank you, Chris. My, Hey, I, I've got, I got a question to ask both of you in closing. Um, All right. I like I like to hijack narratives. By the way, um, <laughs> <laughs> didn't notice. I'm kind of a, I'm kind of a bully. <laughs> um, I do not. I do not. I do not leave room for people to create a mutiny on me, and so then I just lead and hijack every narrative with my questions. So the questions <laughs> that I have in closing to the two of you are: If you could give credit or thanks to one person in your life that you don't give enough credit or thanks to, or that you've never thought to thank, who would that be? Wow. Ooh. This Ah. is the question that we've used to spark over 500,000 relationships within the workplace. This is the question that that lives on my soul. This is it. Yeah, you. I mean, you hit you hit me with the letter A, and um, my friend Tim Antioch that uh, went on about four weeks ago. I wish I had more time to say thank you to Tim, and uh, so I think I'm going to send Tim a uh, a text after this call. And Tim, I just want to let you know just how grateful I am for the encouragement that you were to me. Um, in the five or six years that we got to know each other. So I'm going to, I'm going to give a shout out to my friend, Tim Antioch. And I'm in closing, I'm, I'm actually going to give a tip of gratitude to my father. Daryl knows the story, though. Sometimes we may not see eye to eye on things. 
And I just want to let you know, I'm grateful that you're my father. You provided me a good foundation. You gave me a lens to look at things through a completely different lens. Um, I'm grateful. I love you. We don't talk all the time, but I just want to let you know, I'm grateful that you're my father. What's your dad's first Mm -hmm. name? My dad? Yeah. Yeah, J-A-Y. J. To Tim, to Jay, and to my dad, Phil. Who's a great salesman? I mean, he's he's got uh, he's sold over a, a, a billion and a quarter in residential homes in the last forty years. He's a monster at sales, uh, and he's always trying to coach me on how to sell from the heart. But I never listen. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I do. He knows. That. What a great time, Chris! Thank you so much. I'm sure uh, you will not be a stranger to this show. We really, really appreciate you. This has been incredible. Thanks for having me on, guys. Oh, Cheers, stuff. Scott Cheers. McGregor. Uh, Cheers good to stuff, Scott, Chris. and Happy New Year. And Happy New Year oh. to everybody listening in. Uh, what a phenomenal way to bridge into 2024. Larry, if we get this, if we get what we just talked about over the last 30 minutes with Chris, this will transform our year coming up. I mean, this is, this is a game changer. And, and I'm so thankful uh, for for Chris and his perspective. You know, absolutely. And I'm sitting here thinking about just being a game changer in conversations. What would it be like? And Daryl, you know this, you know, from me as well, is if you can just open up every single conversation with just a little bit of gratitude. Mm-hmm. And, and just, I just want everyone to think about this for a moment, Daryl, then you can send us off into a great new year is what would happen if, and I'm going to use Daryl as an example, you just open up every conversation with this. Hey, Daryl, I've really been looking forward to this conversation. I'm super grateful for our time together here today. In fact, I've been looking forward to it ever since we set this time up two weeks ago. I just want to let you know, I appreciate you. And then roll into the Beautiful. opening act of your next part of the conversation. I'm telling you, it's transformational to use what Chris had said in the beginning of our podcast. I'm a firm believer in gratitude's a game changer. Yeah. And I want to say uh, thank you. Just a sincere thank you to everybody in the Selling from the Heart community. If you've listened to this podcast for more than one episode, guess what? You're part of this community of authentic sales professionals. Um, on behalf of the whole team at Selling from the Heart, we want to say Happy New Year to you. This is going to be a phenomenal year coming up. There are some incredible things on the horizon. So make sure to like and subscribe. And Larry, as we wrap this year up too, I just want to say thank you to you. Uh, The opportunity we have to dive into these incredible conversations and the friendship that's grown around it. I'm just so thankful for you and I'm thankful for all that's ahead. Oh, no, I appreciate it. I just, I'd I'd have to give it right back to you because, man, here we are. uh, It's six and a half years. We're rolling on a weekly podcast after after I convinced you to do this podcast (laughs) and we agreed to name it Selling from the Heart. What a wild ride. Thank you. Thank you to everybody. Have a great new year and we look forward to seeing you in 2024. That's right. And until next time, keep being genuine, keep being authentic, keep building trust, show intentional gratitude. And most of all, Sell from the heart.